Welcome to part 6 of the Underwater World Chase tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we created a fog image effect using the camera depth buffer. In this part we will extend this fog effect to be independent of the camera far plane. We will then apply the same method to the underwater image effect so that the noise amount applied is based on the distance to the camera. So at this point the fog effect is relying on the camera far plane and we have to move the far plane further or nearer to change the fog. But we want to make this independent so that we can keep the far plane at for example 1000 and we can increase the fog here as well. So let's open up the fog shader. And to create this we're going to add two more float properties in which we'll set the depth start and the depth distance in meters. So let's add that and we're going to type a depth start which we'll call the depth start and that is going to be a float value and by default it's going to be 1 and the other one is going to be the depth distance and we'll call this the depth distance which is a float with a starting value of 1 let me add a comma here now let's add these values to the subshader as well so we'll type a float and we'll call this the depth start and we're going to add the depth distance. Now let's scroll down to the frag and we're going to implement these values into our equation. And to create our custom fog size we're going to implement another built-in shader variable called the projection parameters. And this is a type of a float for which has four different values and if we read here we can see that the Z is the camera far plane and we want to multiply our depth value by the camera far plane so we can convert it into meters and then we're going to implement our variables that we created. So behind this line of the linear O1 depth we're going to multiply this one by the projection parameters. So projection params dot it's z. Now by multiplying this value by the projection parameters dot c this value is not between 0 and 1 anymore, so we need to convert this back to a value between 0 and 1. So let's create a new line and we're going to adjust the depth value. So let's type depth value is going to be the depth value that it is minus the depth start. And we're going to divide this by the depth distance. Now let's put this between parentheses and as we want to make this value be between 0 and 1 always we can saturate the entire thing so we'll put parentheses around the entire equation and let's close it off with a semicolon. Now let's save this shader and we're going to implement these values of depth start and depth distance into the fog effect as well so we can set them in the inspector. So let's write out a public float and we'll call this the depth start and we'll create another public float and we'll call this the depth distance. Now let's apply these values to the material using the fog shader. So let's say material.setFloat and we're going to set the float of depth start to the local depth start and we're also going to set another float and the other float is called the depth distance and we'll set that to the depth distance. Now let's save this script and go back to Unity. Now back in Unity you'll notice that everything is now foggy and that's because all of these variables are still set at zero. Now if we increase the depth distance you'll see that we see some land again. And we can adjust this ourselves with just this parameter. And you'll notice that the camera far plane is still at 1000. Now at this point you don't see any fog near the camera, but let's say you want to change that and have everything foggy. Then we can set the depth start value to a minus value. And we'll see some fog everywhere. Now let me change the color to a bit more green blue. So we can adjust now the fog to anything that we want. 
Now all that's left to do is make our underwater effect distance based as well, just as we did with the fog effect. And to implement this we can simply copy paste some of the variables from the fog shader into the underwater image effect shader. So let's go to the fog shader and copy paste the depth start and the depth distance and we'll paste that into the properties of the underwater image effect. Let's also get the floats from the subshader and paste them into the subshader of the underwater image effect. Now let's go to the frag and we'll copy paste these two lines. So copy and go to the underwater image effect, scroll down and above here we're going to paste these values as well. And we also need the camera depth texture, so let's go to the fog effect again, copy the sample 2D of the camera depth texture, and paste that into the subshader of the underwater image effect as well. Now let's implement the depth value into our equation. So at the end of this line where we multiply it by the pixel offset, we'll multiply this by the depth value. And now it will take the depth value into account. Now the way the fog shader works is that the further it gets away from the camera, the stronger the fog effect is. So the higher the depth value is. But we want to invert that on the underwater image effect so that the objects that are very near to the camera, they get offset a lot with the pixel offset. And the ones that are very far away, we won't see the effect as high as very near objects. So we can do that by inverting it by saying 1 minus on the depth value and this will invert the depth value. So let's save that and now let's go to the underwater effect C sharp script and we're going to implement the same values that we did with the fog effect. So let's get the depth start and depth distance and we'll add that to this script and let's also get the set floats here and we'll add that to the script as well. There we go. Now with everything in place, let's save this script and go back to Unity. And now with the application running, we can increase the depth distance and we should see some movements near the camera. So let's increase this value a little bit more. And there you can see the movements of the underwater image effect only apply to the distance of 80. Now we can increase this a little bit more, of course. And we can, of course, also change the fog effect independent of each other. So let's say that it's very foggy. We can uh, increase this a little bit further. Maybe set the start a little bit less. And there you go. So now we have two fully working image effects of fog and noise based image displacement using the camera depth buffer. In the next part we will set up a 3D noise flow field in C sharp in which we will spawn fishes or any other objects of your choice. As we won't be doing a lot of shaders in the following parts I will name those a new tutorial series on flow fields. The source files of this tutorial is available for download at my Patreon. This tutorial series is made possible by the amazing patrons at my Patreon. If you would like to support me creating free Unity tutorials about audiovisuals, algorithms and shaders, you can become a patron as well. You will then get access to all exclusive source file content of the tutorials. Go to patreon.com slash peerplay for more information. Special thanks to Devin the Dude and Derek Vechter. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. If you would like to stay updated to new release tutorials, subscribe to the channel and turn the notifications on. Hope to see you again in the next part. Happy coding!